Amen. If you have your Bible, look with me in Isaiah. I don't have a real long message today, but I did get a word from the Lord. Amen. Good to see Sister Leslie back in the building. Amen. You know, when somebody's been ill, amen, they, when you pray for them, they are a symbol of answered prayer. Amen. Amen. God wants us to pray for each other, and then that way we can see him work. Amen. And when he worked, we express gratitude. Yeah. Like that leper who came back and said to Jesus, he said, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Amen. I was sick and now I'm healed. Amen. And it's because of you, I say thank you. Amen. And so we say thank you on behalf, amen, of Sister Leslie and many others. Amen. amen. Who've been ill. We thank God for blessing the saints to come out. Amen. Amen. Now, if you, if you have Isaiah chapter 9, we're going to look at two verses, and then we're going to get into this. Say amen when you have verse 6, Isaiah 9 and 6, and we'll read 6 and 7. It says, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his government and its peace will never end. And he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The, the passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's army will make this happen. Amen. Amen. I read from the NLT version. We thank God for his word. And today I just want to talk uh, from this thought, God with us brings peace. Amen. God with us brings peace. Amen. Somebody say it with the pastor. God with Amen. us brings Amen. peace. We live in a time where it's a lot going on. We live in a time where it seems to not be any rest because when you want to sit down, there's something else you got to go do. Not only that, people don't always act like they should. And even ourselves, sometimes we, we can get involved in so much to where it's like, you know, I need to sit down somewhere because I, I need to just give me a little moment here. But peace is important to have. I think peace is more better than money. I think sometimes I'll pay for something so I will have peace. I'll pay a ticket so I'll have peace when I bump into the police. Amen. And certain people, you know, you want to get out of your hair. Or certain uh, uh, debts, you know, you just want to get that out of your hair. Just pay these people so you can have peace. <laughs> John chapter 1 verse 14 it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth as we celebrate Christmas and yesterday we had a, a, a marvelous just in thinking about how there's joy to the world the Lord has come and just the fact that he was born no matter uh, what scoffers may say, well, it wasn't winter, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. But we know that our Lord, he came. Yeah. Yeah. And he was sent of the Father. Yeah. And he is full of grace and truth. And so we can be grateful at Christmas time and all year long because God with us, Emmanuel, brings peace. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Right. Romans 8, uh, the, the 10th verse of that same 5th chapter says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? And when you think about your life, when I think about my life, we all have sinned. Come on. Yeah. 
We all have come short. We all have missed God's standard. None of us in here is righteous outside of Jesus. Come on. And so we were God's enemies at one time, but God has sent his son. He's coming to the world to bring about peace between us and God. How is, what is that piece about? He has restored us. He has reconciled us through the death of his son. Uh -huh. And so we thank God that, of the amazing grace that has been given to us. Well, what is peace? Peace is a, a state of inner wholeness and well-being. A state of inner wholeness and well-being. When, when, when you have peace within, it shows. Even in your actions, even in your disposition, when you have peace within, even in your prayer life, when, when you say, well, I've been praying, well, where's your peace? Uh -oh. Because one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. Come on now. And one of the fruits of you trusting God is peace. Uh -huh. And sometimes I fall short right here. I know y'all may have got it all together, but some things kind of lay on you. <laughs> it just kind of holds you down. And it's kind of, and, and if, if we're not careful, it will smother out our worship. And that trouble will become our worship because we have allowed it to roll over and over and over in our mind. But peace is a state of inner wholeness and well-being. In the, in the same fifth chapter of Romans, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been made right with God, or right in God, uh, sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. We have been justified by faith, and now we have peace with God because of what the Lord has done for us in sending his son, Jesus Christ. Isaiah talked about uh, in this uh, uh, ninth chapter, he talks about the greatness of the government of Jesus and his peace. There will be no end. And, and this kingdom is called the millennium kingdom in which the, the, the saints will reign with the Lord. This, this millennium reign is which it, it, this millennium means uh, 1000 years. And we can find that in Revelation, the, the, the fourth verse of the 20th chapter. It says, uh, John said, I saw thrones and people sitting on them that had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. They uh, had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their foreheads, or their hands and they all came to life again and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years mm. and so even if somebody uh, destroy your, your physical body and, and murder you even if you are a martyr for the Lord the Lord will cause you to rise again Amen. and so in this millennial reign we will be with the Lord we will reign with him Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God that his government will be of no end. Come on, yeah. There's two groups and two destinations. Uh, the one group will find peace when they die in death. In Isaiah 57 verse 2 it says, For those who follow godly paths will rest in your peace when they die. Yeah. And so we use the word R.I.P. Rest in peace. And some people say rest in power. But this is this is so important for us to look at. One day we're going to get up out of here. Amen. And so those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. And so uh, the blessing of, of those who belong to the Lord, they find peaceful rest when this thing comes to an end. Also, there are some who do not know the way of peace. In the same uh, uh, Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verse 8, it says, they don't know where to find peace or what it means to be just and good. They have mapped out crooked roads and no one who follows them knows a moment's peace. This is a good scripture because we have to be careful who we keep company with. Amen. This is a good, I love Greg when he said he don't follow trends. Yeah. 
And, and this, this is good because there, there's some people who are just going along with the crowd. Come on now, Pastor. I heard a preacher say that what you buy at a Walmart don't make you beautiful. <laughs> what you see on television as a new trend, a new style, don't make you beautiful. Because your hair is not like this person. You buy some hair that make you more beautiful than you were before you bought the hair. Wow. 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 And that's so true because God makes us beautiful. Yeah. We have been created in his image Come and in his likeness. God is the one who has made us. I love it here today because that's why it's, it's, it's real vital. Like Greg said, we need to help the next generation. Yeah. We all have that purpose. We all have that job to do that we are light bearers. He said, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and then your heavenly father will be glorified. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And so you and I, in this gross time of darkness, we shine bright Amen. for God's glory. Amen. Hallelujah. And so some do not know the way of peace. And it's a time like never before where, where even uh, the, the message of truth in the church has not been lived out. People who have professed to name the name of Christ live all about themselves. You know, they're too busy uh, with, with the me, me, me instead of the, the, the. And so this is something that I look at in the times and it's grievous to me because it used to be a time when we were excited about God. It used to be a time when we were we were thankful to be able to do anything for his name. Yeah. Yeah. But nowadays we have people who have named the name of Christ, but they are void of him. And even in Matthew he says, some will say, Lord, Lord, but I will say to them, I never knew you. And so that's why I'm challenged Every Sunday, I'm challenged every time that I'm speaking at Bible class to empower you with truth. You know, the preacher's job is not to be your buddy. The preacher's job is not to be your best, your, your, your bestie. My job is to shepherd you in the way of the Lord. And I irritate people with that, but that's, that's my job. That's what I, my job is to do, to warn you of your motive. Yeah. Motive. Some things have gotten into our character. And now it's us. Yeah. And some things we don't see. You like a banana. I don't know if you like bananas, but I love bananas. I love them when they're yellow and they, they fresh from the store. And they, they hadn't wilted. But we have to do like the banana. When you peel the banana down, you know, sometimes there's some spots that's soft. And you pull that part off. And you, you discard that. But the other part, you enjoy. And like our lives, we have to peel ourselves down and see ourselves from the mirror and the reflection of truth, which is found in the Word. And then those bad spots, we pull that to the side. We move that out. And then we embrace the new things, the things that are enjoyable. And so, so that's very healthy for us to do. And so uh, we, we thank the Lord because we know that he has a kingdom that will reign. And it has, there will be uh, no ending to it. I like that thing. Because down here, I see good things coming to an end. I grew up in Quindera. I never forget the best burger, which really turned me into Wimpy the Hamburger Man, was Miss Newman's down there. But it has came to an end. I had a, a in, in the 90s, I had another place called Griff's. Yeah. It's a wrap. It has come to an end. The building looks nice over there, but ain't no burgers. <laughs> and so things come to an end here. People that we used to see in and, and places that we used to go have shut down. Some people's life have ended, and we must carry on once, once people that we know and enjoy has gone on. This is just a true fact of life. But the Lord's kingdom has, there will be no ending, Brother Downs, to it. No ending. Hmm. I want to be in the group that finds peaceful rest. 
But also I want to talk about God with us, how it brings peace. God with us brings peace uh, uh, because we have present personal peace. Jesus said in John 14, verse 27, he says, peace I leave with you. Amen. My peace I give you. Amen. I do not give to you as the world gives. Right. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. This scripture I find so comforting. There's a lot of things to be concerned about. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things that, that we can be worried about. Amen. But the Lord gives us he said he, the peace that he gives us is not like the world. The world has this temporary peace and then all of a sudden they, there's a war that broke out. You can even make up with people and all of a sudden they can, they can still throw a little shade your way. <laughs> you know. But the Lord, he gives peace. He gives us a peace. And you and us must embrace his peace. Sometimes in, in the midst of uh, some that's uh, not agreement in, in relationships, sometimes we don't have agreement. And when there's not agreement, sometimes it's just really the best thing to do is to hush. Come on, This is something that, that I'm trying to really learn. I hadn't mastered it, Veronica. But I'm trying to learn this because, you know, you can blow up the vessel. That's right, Pastor. Wow. One of the things that the Lord told me in 2019, he told me, he said, don't let nothing unravel you. Don't, you know how somebody be like, boy, I'm about to set it off in here. <laughs> that right there. He said, don't let anything unravel you. Right. Uh, you know, uh, James Brown said, you about to make me come out of myself. <laughs> you know, he said, don't let anything unravel me because guess what? Just as surely as you get your temper waxed hot, yes, sir. you can give up the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I said, okay. Oh. And, and I've been trying to hold to it. Robert Ron, but it's challenging. Because yeah. some people boy, will disturb your groove. Wow. Some people boy, are joy stealers, peace robbers, and blessing blockers. Yeah. And so we need to embrace the peace of God. We need to say, Lord, I need your peace. Yeah. And this is where I make big mistakes. I'm telling me, y'all, I make big mistakes by not Bidding him for his peace. That's it. That's I make it. big mistakes by not saying, okay, let me stop. Lord, I need your peace right now. My peace is removed from me. I need my peace. You know, they say this even in, in, in communication. Hold your peace and let God fight you back. You know, I, I'm, let me hold my peace. We say that all the time. But it's difficult to hold your peace. Especially yeah. when your feelings is involved. <laughs> And so I need to ask the Lord, when things are not going my way, yeah. or the way that I envision it, or the way that I see how it is that they don't see, yeah. Lord, give me peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. He told his disciples, he said, my peace I give to you. How many disciples in here? He said, don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about this present personal peace? First of all, peace with God. Amen. Peter said this in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 11. He said, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. I like this scripture here. And somebody say, don't say nothing about peace. I said the same thing when the Lord gave it to me. But we have to look at things that war against your soul. Oh. Mm. Circumstances can get your whole soul off. Amen. He just, I get mad at my wife. I love my wife. I get mad at my wife and just be like, I ain't going to church. Wow. You know, some people have said that. Yeah. I'm just testifying about y'all because y'all ain't going to church. I ain't going to church. But I ain't paying no bills. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just going to shut down on it all. <laughs> that was a liar. <laughs> That's how how things can rock you if you're not careful. Yeah. And so 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 we have to understand that when we have peace with God, we have purpose and direction. You gotta put that on your paper. You got purpose and direction when you have peace with God. Well, number one, you know who you are. Yeah. You know what God has called you to do. 
No matter what everybody else is not doing. You got to know who you are and what you've been called to do. You know, when you have peace with the Lord, when you and him is in harmony, you standing on what you standing on. Yeah. You ain't getting up off of it. No matter what the children do, no matter what your mate may not be doing or doing, you standing on what God has taught you. Yeah. Amen. You living out of your love for him. Yeah. You know, you're motivated by him being in the audience. Him watching you. Yeah. We sing this song. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. We sing that song. He lives. Is he living in us? Uh -oh. We got present personal peace with God. Isaiah 26 verse 3. It says you will keep uh, in perfect peace those whose mind are steadfast because they trust in you. Amen. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. He said he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Come on now. And so we have peace when we, when we are connected yeah. to the Lord. When we connect it. Jesus talked about abiding in the vine. Yeah. And you know, as long as we abide in him, we'll bear fruit. For without him, we can do nothing. Yeah. And so we need to remain in the Lord. It's peace in the Lord. Peace with God, also peace within. Thank God that Jesus was born. We have peace within. The psalmist said in Psalm 139, verse 23, he says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Amen. Search me. You know, I had to ask myself over and over again, you know, you know, Lord, am I moving in the right direction here? Am I, am I in your will? Am I in your path? Because we can be fickle sometimes. We can be just as goofy as the day is long. We can be forgetful, too, of what we have prayed about. I was telling the choir this morning as we rehearsed, I was talking to them about how I, when I was 11 years old, I first got my first set of clippers. Uh, Durham McFadden gave them to me, Pastor McFadden. And I love the haircut. I always wore natural and, and braids, Michael Jackson natural and braids. When my mom sent me to get my first haircut, I was in fourth grade, and, 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 and he gave me an eye belief. So I went from a fro, from a bush, to a puny. And I wanted a haircut every day. I like the way the smell of the after the, the, the shaving cream and all that. I, I like the little things. That's why I'm a genuine barber. And, and, and one of the things that had happened to me is that I didn't like the weight in the barbershop. You spend your whole Saturday when I was coming up in the barbershop. And uh, so I said, when I grow up, I'm going to get a barbershop where there's no weight. Well, I grew up, got a barbershop, and I wanted it to be like the heads up where you call first. That was, that was the first thing. And then in 2020, I went to appointments only. So I got what the Lord had, had gave me. Appointments only, now I can do other things and, and then come to work. And so for a few months, I was riding on my way to work. And sometimes I would go State Avenue and I would go different directions. And I would see a lot of barbershops. And, and then I would start looking around. And I see they had a whole lot of cars mm -hmm. in their barbershop early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I started becoming like, you know, questioning, what's going on with me? What's going on with me? My money still was there. Everything was still in place. But my eyes had got distracted on what somebody on, else was being, Mary. was doing. Come on. And so the Lord had to give me a little tap on the shoulder. He said, didn't you ask for a car Come first barbershop? Why do you worry about the cars in front of your buddy's barbershop? <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, I did ask for that. He said, didn't at the end of the week when you get ready to get your ties out, ain't the money that you believe me for there? I said, sure is there. I'm goofy, ain't I, Lord? <laughs> and sometimes we can be goofy, meaning that God is, is, has already answered our prayer, Sean Down, and we still looking around at what somebody else is doing. He said, follow me without looking around. I'm your provider. Put that in your purse, your wallet, take that home. And so there's times when we get to looking at things and God already blessed us. 
And that's the time we should be praising. Amen. Even for the revelation that I, I've gotten off of my thinking. Even for him showing you when you are. Because he going to show you when you are. Then surely as you sitting there on, you're going to get off. Thank him for when he gets you back on. Talk about peace with God. And so we should abstain from fleshly lust. Abstain from situations that get you off and get you, you know, one of the things I don't like in driving is when you're driving by and you got the right of way to go and somebody over here got a stop sign and they almost going to hit you. That's right. That irritates me. I'm going to be like, boy, stop. You know, I almost want to tell them what to do. But everybody ain't where I'm at. Everybody don't have the amount of prayer time I have. Everybody don't have the amount of scriptures I know. Everybody, we share the road with people on meth. We share the road with people who have AKs laying across their lap. We share the road with people that can't wait to do I've seen videos where people that ran up on cars and then the people get out with a gun chasing them. All right. You know, we live in a time where you got to be careful of road rage. We got to be careful of that. Because we share the role with other people. And we have to watch and pray. And pray. Yes, sir. Amen. He gives us peace within. Thank you. God with us gives us peace within. In, in the 15th chapter, verse 13 of Romans, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord, this is a prayer that the Apostle Paul was saying to the Roman church, that the Lord, may he, and his prayer was that may the Lord, the God of all hope, fill you with joy and peace in believing. And this is what I love about God. When you believe him, when you trust him, there's a level of peace that comes. Amen. Amen. Because you have gained it over, you, you've surrendered it to him. You believe that he has the power to bring it to pass? You believe he hears you when you pray? And so you get peace in believing. And we need him to fill us with joy. Because I'm going to be just it's clear. Some weeks are tough. Some days are challenging. Sometimes it seems like your joy has just like a dove flew away. And circumstances can get on your thought life so heavy. That if you don't talk to God and release it to him in faith, you'll be consumed by your very situation. I'm preaching to myself, Brother Wayne, today. I'm talking to Pastor B this morning. We really need the Lord to feel us because he is the God of hope. He's the God of hope. And I love God because... If I didn't have Jesus, I'd be lost. Come on, oh, man. Man. Come on. I see some of the people that I grew up with, and they don't have the, the, the joy of the Lord that I have. And I'm like, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Money couldn't do it for me. Drugs couldn't do it for me. Come Sex on. couldn't do it for Come me. On. Going Come places on. and going to clubs yeah. and happenings and, and all that. They got clubs out now where there's no music being played, and you got these earphones on, and you just... You know. <laughs> I said, boy, if I went to that club, I'd be laughing, laughing at people like, what is they doing? Cause they got silent clubs now. They got all, they got new sins out, y'all. And so, you know, I, you know, this is, you know, I could, that wouldn't fulfill me. That wouldn't bring me fulfillment. That wouldn't bring me fulfillment. You know, and so, so Christ. Fills us with hope good. in a hopeless world. Yes, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, and, and this is to the Colossians church. He said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. I love that verse. You know, he said, Let the peace of God rule in your heart. How did how that happen? When we have a relationship with Him. And when we have confident trust and expectation of him moving on our behalf in our life, he's the one who's able to keep you. We can be confident of this very thing, the very thing that he begun in us. He's able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. And so we can allow him, Lord, just, just rule in my heart. Yes, yes, yes. Let your peace. It's, a, it's supernatural. Yeah. It's super, I'm so grateful for his uh, supernatural presence. Yeah. I'm grateful that I had that uh, 
uh, encounter with his presence. Yeah. I believe that that's what changed my life. Yeah. When I was consumed with his divine presence. A lot of people say, oh, it didn't happen to you, boy. Yes, it did. Yeah. It just didn't happen to you. Yeah. But it happened to me. Right. And I have not been the same since it happened to me. Don't let the devil steal what your, your testimony, your experience, your Christian experience. You need to hold on to your Christian experience. Right. Yeah. It don't need to be no emotional. It need to be a t He let me experience his tangible presence. Yeah. A manifestation of his tangible presence. And when you had an encounter, you don't need people to tell you to do what's right. Or no, no, no. You got his presence. His presence is governing your life. And you allow him to rule in your heart. When you could be irritated and agitated, the older we get, we get agitated quick. It don't take much. Stop that noise. Sit down somewhere. You know, we get irritated real quick. I wish I had a church saying that. <laughs> Not only do we have peace with them, but we have peace with others. Yeah. Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 18, it says, If it is possible as much as depend on you, live peaceably with all men. Oh, yeah. And so God with us gives us peace in relationships. Yeah. You know, what about family members? Some family members are troublemakers. Talk about it. I'm just going to tell you right now, we got some people and, and that will start some stuff. Y'all right. got some stuff starters too? Yeah. We got some stuff starters. <laughs> and, and I'm learning that God has called me to love them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm learning, Sister Smith, that God, despite of what others may be on and what they're doing, God has called me to be his ambassador yeah. in front of them. That means I had to let go of every ought and offense. That's right. There it is, right there. No, they did me dirty, Pastor. Yeah. Dog dirty. That ain't no family to me. Yeah. You know, some of y'all got that, that testimony. Because oh, yeah. people, people are broken. Yeah. People are injured. People are nuts without the Lord. Yeah. And so you who got the Lord ought to have peace. Right. You ought to be a symbol of peace. But when they see you, they say, man, all this confusion. And they just say, peace? Do you know some people don't want peace? Some people like, I don't want to mix it up in here. It's too quiet. The scripture said they don't know the way of peace. And others that follow their path won't know it. That's why you got to not keep company with certain people. You know, you, you keep company with somebody cussing. That's why in the shop, we got a cuss jar. You cuss, put a dollar in there. We're going to break you today. <laughs> we got to hear all your cussing. You're going to feel that jar. <laughs> you may be asked to leave. But, but you know, a cussing mouth can influence you to cuss. Yeah. You may not even desire to cuss. But a circumstance will, will, will put a, a cussing in your mouth instead of a praise. Right. And you have to identify. Right. Yeah. Why is that moving me like that? Yeah. Yeah. Why do I want to put the hammer on them? Why is my mouth wanting to just say some violent words? People is on one now. They say, don't you even go to my funeral. I never heard stuff. You going to be dead. How you going to tell somebody not to go to your funeral? You want to give them everything. I'm going to give it all to them. Don't you show up at my funeral, Ron. I heard some crazy stuff. Man, man, man. I'm like, where is God at? Where is God at? You know, and, and I'm, I'm praying that God help me because he showed me. He said, boy, you hold people in unforgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. He, he exposed that to me. He said, you hold people. He said, Look, watch how when this happens, watch how you do. Wow. It's like an invisible wall. It's a it's a it's a, a lip biter. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, don't nobody know what you and God. It's in your heart. <laughs> it's in, that poison is in your heart and it will rotten you up again it will rotten you you look around you get a diagnosis with cancer or something wow because you got bitterness and it's rotten up in you wow. that's why the Lord don't want me to be your buddy he want me to tell you the truth yeah. Yeah. 
Amen. Well, we don't warn you of the things that move within us. It's things that move within us and that poisons us. Yeah. And we don't smell like Jesus. We smell like unforgiveness. We smell like envy. We smell like bitterness. We smell like hatred. And so the Lord wants us, as his people, he wants us to have peace with others. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And this was a scripture where the Lord was using the Apostle Paul to talk to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church had all kind of evil stuff going on. You know, they, they was fornicating. He said in the seventh chapter, he warned them about fornicating. They was committing adultery. Some were sleeping with their own father's wife. Oh, I think in the ninth chapter, it was some people, they, would, they had to turn over to Satan that the, that the Lord would allow that rod to run them back. It was a lot going on. They had disorder in their tongues and disorder in their prophecy and the gifts was being used in the wrong spirit. And so he was exposing a whole lot of things. But he wants us in relationships in the body of Christ to be at peace. Who in the church are you offended by? Who's in the building? You know, how do you get along? Sometimes it's you. How do you get along? You know, I'll never forget when, when, when I was in elementary school, they had a grade card. That thing still scared me, and I can see it today. <laughs> and it was a part of it that says, does he work well with others? <laughs> and I would get used and ends on that. And my mom would, oh, man, she would bring the noise on that. And I didn't work well with others. I had challenges with working with people. But I ain't the only one in here. I didn't get an amen. Did nobody want to say amen? But they know they're guilty. They're guilty. I got ass. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for self control. <laughs> God let you come. He is my amen corner, I'm telling you. But listen. Man, I failed at that, Isaac, man. I, you know, I, was, I didn't want to share. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this. I had problems with people. Yeah. Sometimes I just want the horseplay. Yeah. I don't know if y'all like the horseplay. I like to wrestle and to do different stuff. And you know, that was, it's the time for that. Recess. <laughs> but, but the Lord, he didn't want confusion in his church. You know, he's not the author of confusion. He wants things done in order. That's why in this same Corinthians chapter, he says, you know, he says, it's not good for a man to touch a woman because of fornication. But let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Now, the thing about marriage is beautiful. It's a beautiful picture of, of Christ in the church. Jesus is an example to husbands how he, he sanctifies the church and he washes the church. And likewise, as husbands, we should, we should treat our wives with tenderness. Amen. We should not hurt their feelings. Amen. Amen. I was sorry, I'm a man. Okay. We should not hurt their hurt their feelings. We should, you know, we we should care about what they think. That's right. We should care about and we, and we should not grow bitter with them. That's right. Amen. This is what he said. He said, a husband, he don't have to share her with nobody. Right. Yeah. He can have his own wife Amen. and render due benevolence to her. The marital affection do. And then every wife should have her own husband. Yeah. Now he, he brings up in Peter, he talks about Sarah. Amen. And he uses Sarah because of her, her reverence. Yeah. And the big thing about a wife, a Christian wife, is her reverence. Right. Y'all notice how they use submissive? Because submissive is a wound to the women. Wow. It's a wound. And if I tell you over and over again, you just go, it's, it's going to be like a bar of soap. It's going to get smaller and smaller. <laughs> but submissive is the action of the wife. 
That means she, she in her position of the helpmate. Yeah. This is what the scriptures say. Now, a lot of women look at this as beneath. Some of it is because of the experience with how men have been mistreating women. Right. Starting with their, their, their father, the first man. And then it goes on to brothers and cousins and uncles and so on and so forth. And then other examples. And so because of that, there's a guard there. There's a wall there that's like, oh, you ain't hurt me. And so that's why the, the Apostle Peter says that you are, you, you are Sarah's daughter as long as you don't have fear and amazement. That means you are confident that you ain't going to say yes to somebody who's a monster. Right. She said yes. All on Facebook. She said yes. <laughs> you know, what did you say yes to? Ah. Did you say yes to somebody you know that God sent? Come on, sir. Mm. See that right there? So everybody has a role. And so in marriage, it's work. Because yeah. everybody don't do what they should be doing. That's right. And acting how they should be acting. So what do you do when your spouse is not doing what he or she should be doing? You should be praying. Yeah. And you should still be doing what you want or what you have been taught to do from the scripture. Yes. This, is some, this is just practical stuff. Yes. But this, this will keep your marriage healthy and strong when you know I'm supposed to do it as to the Lord. Yes. When he says, wives, submit to your husband as it is fitting in the Lord. They're going to run me out of here today. I feel it. <laughs> this is practical, but this is what we need to make sure that we don't lose sight of. Amen. Well, he, he didn't do this. He didn't. Well, he do. But guess what? What you got to do? Many times I've been told, I've dropped dying, sending indictment papers on my wife to the Lord. <laughs> Many times I've been done. I'm telling the truth. We in church, right? Amen. And the Lord told me, what about you? That's right. Oh. That's right. <laughs> oh. Okay. And so this is, this is a reality. Now, when you think about the, the husband, he got the weight of it. Because he's the head. Amen. And so the head needs to lead the whole body in the right direction. So he got to be acquainted with the Lord. And if he's not acquainted with the Lord, he better get acquainted. Yeah. He need to come holler at me and let me explain to him. I talk to single men all the time, and they expect for it to be this way and that way. I said, man, no. These are things that happen in marriage. Yeah. Especially when you marry for a long time, you really have The ones married the longest, the devil is waiting. He said, yeah, y'all got them years, but I'm going to make it some misery up in here. Yeah. Because misery loves company. And the devil is most miserable. And so he's going to show himself because he want to break you up. Yes, he does. And so the Lord wants peace in relationship. You can tell when somebody in their marriage is peace. Because if it's not peace, it's going to show. Somebody's going to spill it out. And people are all like, oh, ain't no peace in their home. <laughs> And we're not making marriage look attractive. You know that right there? And, and if you really want to know the truth, we are, we are missing mentors. We're missing people that will say, like Greg said to his nephew, man, you got to cut your hair and look presentable. What's nothing wrong with that? Now, the, the world said, man, leave his hair. Let him, let him look raggedy if he want to look raggedy. And some people's eyes, that's it. I can't wait to my hair get that long. In some people's eyes, that's where that is. But we live in a time where people don't like to be told anything. Yes, you're right. Amen. People want you to just lead them along to their doom. And that's not what God wants. That's not for the church. We need to be bold as a lion. We need to be tender with people. We need to express. And, and he's right. Some women won't date you if you got braids. They say, oh, I don't like dudes with braids. I don't like dudes with, with, with cornrows. Some people know what they want. You know. Some people don't want a woman 
that they got these issues and that issues. They don't want a whole bunch of baggage. Right. They don't want to repair. They don't want a, 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 a what we call a project. <laughs> Not a project <laughs> mean location. Meaning somebody that's gonna take a lot of work. Yeah. Right. And some people the first thing they gonna get is somebody that's a project. Well, I can fix her up. I'll buy a new shirt. <laughs> Give her some deodorant, maybe she won't be musty. And do this and do that. They do the same thing with me. I'm gonna buy him some boots. Man, I get paid, girl, and he be all right. Some people want a project. Wow, crazy. Whatever happened to get somebody that's equally young? Come on. Somebody yeah. don't want to go. Somebody you ain't got to tell to take a bath. Wow. Wow. Brush their teeth. <laughs> shave their beard. Yeah. That's crazy. Sometimes we get in the rough. Uh -huh. But God wants peace yeah. in the body. Yeah. He said in Ephesians 2, he says in verse 14, for he himself is our peace. Yeah. Jesus himself is our peace. He's our peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He said he's the, he's the everlasting Father. He's the mighty God, the wonderful counselor. All these are his descriptions of who he is. Yeah. And, and, and I got to admit, as the pastor, sometimes I don't go to the wonderful counselor. Right. Sometimes I don't go to it. And, and as a result, I forfeit my peace. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've got a situation that's real bad. And I didn't go to the mighty God. Mm. You know, he, he's not only that counselor who will counsel you, he's mighty. He has power to, to bring it to pass. What else is he? He's an everlasting father. Yeah. Some of our earthly fathers have crossed stone. But he's an everlasting father. That means you can come to him anytime, night or day. And you know what, Mother Wynn? A few nights, he took in my sleep. Because I wouldn't go to him. Right. Come on. You up all night? That's right. The Lord said, no sleep for you. <laughs> I was praying. I'm like, why ain't sleep? You know, what did I take some uh, uh, a B12 or something? It got me moving. What happened? God on the talk. And, and I'll be fighting him on that. And when I stop fighting him and I pray, I pray, I pray, I'll be it's no sleep. When I pray and I pray, everybody come to my mind, I'm praying for. Everybody, every situation, everything, wanting to go to sleep so bad, but I'm talking to the master because he's an everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. And when you go to him, you got to know this. He's going to replace your supplications with peace. He told us, you know, right there in the fourth chapter of Philippians, he said, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so the Lord wants us to have peace. You know, I thank God that he sent Jesus. God with us has many precious promises for us to live by. We must embrace them. We must say, okay, Lord, what are you trying to show me here? That's good. This is irritating me. What are you trying to get out of me? He said, trials come to make us strong. He's a great teacher. He will teach you through your sufferings. What comes when you suffer and you go through things, various trials? What comes? What? Patience. And when we're going through certain things, we get impatient. You may be sick. <laughs> There's times when we want to start saying words about you just this, you ain't this, and you ain't that, because they have taken we gone to our limit. That's when it's time to go to the wonderful counselor. That's when it's time for us to go to him. We got a brand new year that's right on the horizon. And if we be as honest as we can in this place, we have missed some opportunities because of how we have been thinking. It's real. It's real. How we've been conducting ourselves. Yeah. How we've been acting. 
You know, just like when you take your child to the daycare, you ask how were they acting today. And when they wasn't acting the way they were supposed to, you had a conversation with them. You didn't say, let's go get ice cream. No, you said, you had done what's right. And you represent me when you go there. And that's the same thing the Lord is saying to you and me today. How we act is a total representation of what's not in us. And what's not driving us. And what we are not doing. And what we should be doing. Let's stand to our feet.